Muffin is about a bunch of students in a student house. They're all a little bit ridiculous in their own special way. Um, I haven't really got a clue about how to live in society. They're all, they're, they live in their own little bubble. They're, they're too pretentious to care what's going on outside their own bubble. I'd say Student Muffin is uh, an entertainment frenzy made for knobheads by knobheads. I'd say it's an insight into the darkest recesses of Rob Dean and Tom Pritch's mind. Basically just five students trying to live their day-to-day -day life. Five people that just go to uni and get absolutely smashed and have an absolute whale of a time. I wouldn't know because I've never been to university, so I'd go along a bit. That's what I've been told. <laughs> okay. It's very much based on our own lives when we were in university. The characters are all based on ourselves and our friends, although we don't tell them that's their faces. There's uh, a lot of beers involved, a lot of sex, drugs and rock and roll. Le less drugs, le less sex. Yeah, and basically they sort of struggle through life, they don't go into any lectures, and uh, fight off evil shadow people from another dimension. It's all pretty normal stuff. It's basically about five students, um, Alex, Jane, George, Max and Clapton, and their adventures through full-time education. Also backed up by the fact that, you know, there's a kind of impending apocalypse and other hilarious things going on in the background. Clapton, yeah. Well, where to start? Clapton's the mouthpiece of the group. Unique facial expression, which, which basically is the permanent scowl. His superpower is the fact that he's constantly frustrated and constantly aggravated with everyone around him. Awful, awful person. Can you say miserable prick on camera? Miserable prick, then. Just like me, really miserable. Absolute miserable bastard, but I love him. He's like my granddad. The thing about Clapton is I don't think it's I'm like that at all in any sense and this whole interview is me acting up to that fact. He's uh, very like Clapton is Mr Mason. In fact, from the first time I met him, I, I think he's changed an awful lot because I, I saw no Clapton in the first time I saw him strolling down the uh, corridor of Stanley Halls back at Edgehill. He had big ginger locks. <laughs> I can see him, I can, I can hear him burn into me. It's not ginger, it's strawberry blonde. <laughs> Compromise, carrot orange. With his carrot orange locks, and before long we'd polished off half a bottle of uh, black absinthe, and then he just turned into a cynical, jaded version of his former self. He's a very angry, um, selfish brat. We stop looking down at you and up here. <laughs> Horrible person, which is not like that in real life. He's angry at everybody for no particular reason. I think really he feels like he's, you know, should have been born a hundred years ago. Um, working on a plantation, you know, whipping people, mainly whipping. I always compare him to, let's say, the Cartman of South Park or the Will of uh, the Inbetweeners. He's, he's that kind of make out as wouldn't be a show without, uh, without Clapton, I don't think. And he's the easiest to write for because he just writes something really hateful towards the other characters. That's quite simple, really. He's just looking forward to the day when he can climb in a massive limousine and drive out of Armskirk, probably running over most of his housemates as he drives away. Well, again, she was based on somebody we knew. Um, very lazy individual. Jane's the only female of the group, uh, biologically, anyway. So it's starting to watch this TV. Won't leave her chair if she um, if she can help it. She's like, yeah, I'll sit on this chair and watch telly if I want, bore off. And she does a pretty good job of sitting on her ass and playing Jane. All you've got to do is kind of sit there and fester. She's that lazy, she's got an imprint of her ass in a chair. Yeah. <laughs> it's the reason why I've gone fourth. She's the linchpin that holds it all together. The original um, Jane pretty much sat on her ass in a dressing gown. Uh, so I think it's Oscar winning stuff, what I'm doing. In a way, George is, is who I want to be. He's very strange. Uh, he's very happy all the time. But George is like a genuine odd bod. He's, he's kind of, his mind is slightly on another wavelength. I'd love to spend a, a day in his mind. One of them people you see talking to themselves on the bus sat in front of you. He's a spring, he can't time down to anything, he just is there. George. Which one is George? Basically, if you looked at the weirdest Beatles song, that would be George. 
It's just very strange. That's <laughs> all I can really say. He once wore a sock in his penis. From my point of view, he's the hardest to write because you have to sort of think in a different way. He's obsessed with ninjas and aliens and science fiction and the Beatles. All the cool things people like these days, basically. Max was once described as a uh, alcoholic Andrex puppy. He likes a drink, Max. You know, I mean, we're all fond of a drink, but he's dangerously fond of a drink. The, the best way to, to sum up Max would be lovable drunk. Bit of a piss gun. I would love to be able to spend a day in the life of his liver, just to, just to see how much pain that, that poor organ is actually in. What can you say about Max at Howard? It hasn't been said. Uh, abomination. Has been average, scruffy, smelly, pissed up student. Average. I meant typical. Max is a horrific drunk who I hate, but he's not that bad. He doesn't mean any harm, and I think everybody acknowledges that. And apart from Clapton, I think everybody sort of can see past the pissed exterior into his into his little heart. If you if you stripped all the alcohol away from him, he's actually the nicest person out of the group. He's very cute. He's very lovable. Um, but unfortunately he's held back by the fact that he is always very, very drunk. He's kind of the most normal. Uh, he's the only one who can really operate in ordinary society. I'm trying to think of a better word than wanker, but I'll go with wanker. It's a bit of a ladies man, isn't it? Loves going out on the town thinking he's Jack the Lad, pulling all the girls and that, but he's not actually that great at it. He's a romantic guy. Great with his words. I've learned a few tips. A half way who just stumbles and ambles his way through life, flying from one job to a vagina to a job to a vagina. He's like just dead, like obscure and other law. Dave learned some tips, sorry said that to fill in some of the conversation. I could imagine Jane, a little bit of Jane, wanting to have a relationship with Alex but not actually being able to whatsoever because he's, he's, she couldn't handle it. When I first met Tom, he was, um, we knew him by the nickname, uh, what was it, was it? Fit Tom. Fit Tom, yeah. We knew him by Fit Tom. Uh, that's what like, the girls that we knew at the time used to call him. So we always had this image of this sort of really charming, handsome guy. You know, he must, you know, the, the ladies must see something in him. And when we met him, uh, you know, lived up to his expectations, definitely. He's just on the cusp of sort of being totally unsociable, really. He's kind of pleasant. If you, if you met him in a pub, I think he'd be quite nice to you. Or if you were female, anyway, you know, he'd be very nice to you. He'd be so nice to you, he'd try and, you know, stick his penis in your ear. Yeah, he has his problems too. Mainly that he's a dick. My crew. My crew, I love my crew. The crew's brilliant. Best bunch of professionals I've ever worked with. Chris Philpott. He, uh, he sends very angry email messages because none of us give him money. He sends angry messages to me and all the other crew, which I don't like. Depresses me, and I never pay him. He's quite good at catching stuff, uh, especially when you don't tell him and throw stuff at him. He's quite good. But he, he does like to lie down a lot. I think he's a cat, a man of many talents, uh, as his girlfriend will tell you. He's alright. He's just one of them, and he's always there. Uh, could do without him sometimes. Usually holds the boom, and um, I think holds the integrity of the group together because he goes and gets our food. He's good for McDonald's as well in the morning if you want uh, breakfast. But don't ask him for bacon and egg because he gives you double sausage. And Leona is his girlfriend and she does stuff too. Leona Burton, who um, again, she's um, always in the background helping out. But she's one of the key elements without her. She, um, you know, noting shots down and clap a board as well. A bit of everything really. <laughs> a late addition to uh, the group, but we will look She's been really helpful. Mark Thomas who, you know, I would like to, in my later years, uh, make a trilogy of films about Mark, because there's just so much there. You know, there's so much 
there's a mine of material. He really is a beautiful man. Our uh, continuity uh, guy doesn't actually know the meaning of the word. Really, really doesn't know the meaning of the word. There's Mark Thomas, uh, who handles the discontinuity. Uh, he makes sure that when we go into the next shot, things have moved around, you know, that kind of thing. He brings light relief because the shoots are sometimes are very long and heavy, and we do like get on each other's nerves, especially, but I, I, I would just hate everyone. If I say something silly when Mark's around, no one notices because Mark says something even sillier, <laughs> so it saves me a bit. It's lucky he's pretty, really, isn't it? Just he's the entertainment, really. Script supervisor slash discontinuity, according to Rob. I don't actually know what I'm doing, to be honest with you. <laughs> but somehow I get the job done. Kyle, uh, he's uh, quite good uh, at turning the camera on and pointing in the right direction. He's mixed race. Probably actually does the most work of everybody. He's uh, full of ideas. If it weren't for Kyle, me and Rob would probably still be in the moon under the water on Dean's Cape, you know, talking about what we could do with uh, Student Muffin. He's the director, so you know he tells us what to do and stuff. And um, kind of a role reversal, race-wise, if, if you ask me, I'm, I'm not particularly happy about that. Looking after us, making sure that we're actually um, doing something near what we're supposed to be doing. He's the director and the camera person. He does a lot. He runs a shot. Just do as you're told. He knows best. He has a very hard job because he has to try and rein in all our uh, zany personalities. Obviously, you can get a bit tense and stressful sometimes, as any working environment can do, but um, on the whole it seems to be quite fun. I, I enjoy it, un unless I'm not enjoying it, then it's horrible. It's been really good. It's been really good working with everyone. It's I'm getting better and better every time. They all know what they're doing, apart from me. They're a good crew. I wouldn't uh, swap them for the world, but for a pile of cash, then yes I would. And it's worked out really well. It's worked out really well, everyone's complimenting each other, everyone's helping each other, it's a nice little click. We're all <laughs> linking together. We're together quite well. <laughs> Although right now Chris really wants to kill me. I can see his nostrils are flaring. <laughs> Don't breathe in too hard, you'll lose the camera. I have been offered um, many porn opportunities from this. Most people when typing in shoot muffin do assume it's porn anyway. So I was quite disappointed when I, when I did have a sex scene within the first 20 minutes, to be honest with you. When I first was asked to get involved with Student Muffin, I, uh, I actually thought that it was an amateur porn, low-budget production called Student's Muff Dive. <laughs> so I was quite shocked to, you know, when I turned up and I was expected to help out and no one was actually having sex with each other. 